Marek Blizinski was a Polish jazz guitarist and composer. He played with Michał Urbaniak, Wojciech Koralik, and Zbigniew Nemyslowski. Blizinski was the first Polish world-class jazz guitarist. Stylistically, he belonged to the jazz mainstream, continuing the tradition of electric jazz guitar started by Charlie Christian and represented later by musicians such as Kenny Burrell. Barney Kessel, Wes Montgomery, Jim Hall, Joe Pass, Pat Metheny, and John Schofield. Blizinski grew up in a family with strong cultural traditions. He got hit first guitar on Christmas 1962 and taught himself how to play. He founded the band Cherek in 1966, where he played the music of J.S. Bach transcribed for three guitars and drums. The band won the Igerskla Wiki competition in 1967. Blizinski won the first prize in the instrumental category. He wrote in one of his letters, I learned a lot while working with this band. I developed my technique and started to pay more respect to time, tempo and precision in rhythm, most of all however, I learned inner discipline, indispensable in self-development. In 1971 he was already collaborating with Krzysztof Sadowski and Wanda Warska. He founded the Quartet Generacia, which won a prize in the Jazz Nadodra Festival. Blizinski himself won the third prize in the instrumental category. In the years that followed, he played with Zbigniew Nemyslowski, Michał Urbaniak, Tomasz Stanko, Jan Jarczyk, Vlodzimierz Nahorny, Adam Mikowicz, Novi, the Maybeck, the Polish radio's jazz studio conducted by Jan Tajan Rablewski. The Polish radio and television orchestra conducted by A. Truskowski, Wojciech Koralik, and Janusz Muniak. Blizinski's technique was dazzling. He worked very hard, practicing constantly, aiming at maximal precision. He started his own trio in the late 70s, with which he played in jazz clubs and recorded his first album, The Wave. When the Jazz Forum magazine held a contest in 1982, Blizinski attracted the highest number of votes in the jazz guitar category. In the following years, Marek Blizinski and Jaroslav Szmiatana became the two most popular jazz guitar players in Poland. Blizinski was recruited by Zbigniew Nemyslowski in 1983. He played with air condition on jazz festivals in Europe and Canada. Johnny Olson wrote in the Swedish paper Nya Wormlands Tidningen on April 26, 1983, shocking. I was knocked out by his strikingly good guitar playing. He stands still as a statue, with no expression on his face but with what seems to be a direct connection between his brain and guitar. His playing reveals sound knowledge of guitar improvisation history. On four bars distance he went up to his knees in blues mud, somewhere in the Mississippi Delta, rendered guitar cannons of the 1950s and finally sailed across some funk patterns of the kind that make you feel dizzy. Technical problems seem to be totally unknown to him. He swings strongly when he wants to. Whatever he does, he does it with a temporal precision sharp as a razor. A noteworthy man, one of the best I've ever heard, and I've heard quite a few in my life. Despite releasing popular records with other musicians, Blizinski's solo records had little success. Disappointed with imperfect recordings, he used all his savings for instruments and his own recording studio. He started working with his fellow musicians for the Royal Viking Lines. Between cruises, he worked on his next solo album. He was a universal guitarist and a good bass guitar player. His playing was characterized by perfect technique, moderation and good taste. As a soloist, he represented gentle virtuosity, free from cheap tricks, preferring full sound and a natural use of the instrument. Kazimierz Szczyz wrote, his playing is characterized by a synthesis of focus and a unique selection of sounds. He never performs with the aim of showing off, in a manner where fingers are faster than thought, instead, he is always focused and seems to play for himself, without attempting to boast. It's probably this introvert approach to performing that makes him almost unnoticeable, there is only his music on the stage. He was an appraised theoretician. Taciturn and not particularly communicative in person, he was vastly knowledgeable. He published the book Jazz Guitar in 1983, written in surprisingly comprehensible language. This compendium of knowledge about guitar playing was complemented by his teaching experience, gained during jazz workshops in Chodzis and Mikosis. He occasionally collaborated with the Jazz Forum and Jazz Magazines, writing reviews of records and books related to jazz guitar. Hardly anybody knew about Blizinski's illness. He underwent an operation for skin cancer in 1985, which seemed to be a success. He was strongly advised to avoid the sun. He went on another cruise in 1988. Many months spent on sea had a negative effect on him. He started losing moral support, fell into depression and became weaker and weaker. 
Two weeks before the end of a cruise near Jamaica, the doctor on board ordered his immediate return home. In a Warsaw hospital he was diagnosed with dangerous metastases of an advanced cancer. He died three months later in a hospital in Patotska Street in Warsaw, six days before his 42nd birthday. Thanks for watching.